Hello mech warriors and welcome back to the mech lab where we try to be a better mech commander every day. Today I wanted to talk about some of my favorite clan designs from the clan invasion era. So if you're a new player looking to dive into the clans but aren't sure which designs are good, or if you're a veteran commander who's looking for some designs that are highly optimized, today's video is for you. We're going to go over four categories of mech, flanker, cavalry, brawler, and sniper, and I'll cover two mechs in each category that I think are some of the most optimized clan mechs in the game. Most of these are viable right up into the Ill Clan era. First up is the only mech on this list that comes in under a thousand battle value. And if you have any experience playing the clans, you know that good mechs under a thousand battle value are a rarity. And it is the Phantom E variant. This 40 ton speedster can run 14 hexes and has excellent overall armor coverage with over 10 armor in every single location. Its weapons are absolutely brutal for a knife fighter, with a whopping 8 micro pulse lasers and an ATM-3. It comes stock with standard ATM ammo, but you may wish to swap this out for high explosive. The extra close range damage, where the mech wants to be anyways, may end up being more valuable to you. This extremely accurate and fast well-armored mech is an absolute bargain for a mere 975 battle value. Next up on the list, coming in at about 500 battle value more, but with significantly more flexibility is the Dragonfly, specifically the Prime variant. This unit is better armored and a little bit slower, but makes up for that with jump jets. With an SRM-4 and two machine guns for crit seeking at close range, two medium pulse lasers for punching hole at medium range, and an anti-missile system to protect it against enemy missiles, this unit is pretty difficult to kill without dedicated effort, and it's a great harasser, able to fight pretty effectively at eight or six hexes, and dash in and crit out components with its machine guns at close range. The Dragonfly also is quite good at jumping behind enemies and kicking them, as any 7 or 8 jump mech is. Overall, though quite expensive, the Dragonfly will do its job admirably as a flanking and harassment mech while taking a significant amount of punishment to take down. Next up we have the Cavalry category with the Timberwolf S, a 75 ton monster with a 585 movement profile. The Timberwolf S is extremely tough and quite mobile, able to outpace almost almost any inner sphere heavy mech and keep pace with most inner sphere mediums and a whopping 230 armor makes this thing ridiculously hard to bring down. In its left and right arms are its longer range weapons, two medium pulse lasers and a large pulse laser, allowing it to lay down accurate fire at medium range, and even poke at long range with that large pulse laser. But the real star of the show here is a whopping 24 short range missiles. Unlike most Timberwolves, the Timberwolf S carries its shortest range weapons in the torsos, which makes it really good for carrying battle armor to the enemy front line. Now it's not going to be quite as good as as a battle armor taxi as our previous two entries since it doesn't have the overall mobility that they do, but it's more adept at carrying battle armor than most Timberwolves since the longer range weapons are in its arms and it's pretty much only going to be firing those torso mounted weapons whenever it gets in close. With two machine guns and an ER small laser, it does have some very good point blank weapons as well. Now with four tons of SRM-6 ammo, this unit can bring any type of utility ammo that you desire. Infernos or tandem charge, whatever your table allows, the Mad Cat can very comfortably bring those specialty ammos to bear. And having the ammo in the arms could be considered kind of a weakness, but also a strength, since if there is an ammo explosion, it's going to help protect those torsos with vulnerable XL engine criticals in them. But it does mean that once this unit has its arms removed, it's pretty much weaponless. It can still use the machine guns and small laser, but take off this Timberwolf's arms and it's basically just a kicking machine at that point. So if you're looking for a premier heavy cavalry unit and don't mind that 2400 battle value price tag, the Timberwolf S is probably the mech for you in the clan invasion era. But if you're looking for a premium cavalry mech on a budget, coming in at just under 2000 battle value is the Vapor Eagle 2. While the standard Vapor Eagle is probably overall a better mech, the Vapor Eagle 2 comes in much cheaper, which makes it much more viable. It doesn't have 
nearly the armor that the Timberwolf has, but it does have a little bit more mobility with 696 movement. With nearly maxed armor for a 55 ton mech, everything is pretty well protected except for perhaps the arms with only 16 armor, and I would say that 16 is still plenty for this unit. It has a somewhat odd weapons loadout, two medium pulse lasers in the right torso and right arm respectively, and an Ultra AC-10 in the left torso, all connected to a targeting computer. So this thing is very, very accurate even when jumping, and it has some pretty good hole punching power. That Ultra AC-10, once turned into Ultra mode, can do some pretty significant damage. In addition to that, it carries four machine guns, which it can use to crit seek at close range after it opens up those holes. These machine guns producing zero heat is a pretty significant bonus for them. Since this mech does only have 20 heat sinking capability, it gets a little bit toasty if it keeps alpha striking with all of its weapons, especially if it's using ultra mode. Overall, you're pretty unlikely to find a better clan mech for under 2000 battle value if you want something reasonably mobile with some good firepower. Next, we'll move into the brawler category and we have the Galahad or Glass Spider 2 as my first pick here. Slightly more expensive than a Vapor Eagle with much, much more firepower, but an uncharacteristically slow 4-6 movement for a clan mech. The 60-ton Glass Spider 2 has maxed out armor for a 60-tonner, which is pretty good. It can take a hit, especially since, unlike most clan mechs, it has a standard fusion engine. However, it is not a total zombie mech because if you lose the torsos, all of its weapons will be gone. Speaking of weapons, it has a blistering array of lasers two large pulse lasers, two medium pulse lasers, and three small pulse lasers, all linked to a targeting computer. This mech is pure cheese, and if you bring this to the game store, your friends are probably not going to let you play it again. With those two large pulse lasers, one in each arm, it can comfortably fight at long range. It can also use all of its main weapons very comfortably with its heat sinking of 32. Coming in at around 2000 battle value, the Galahad 2 is among the best brawlers that you're going to find in the clan's playbook. Deadly at all ranges with at least 20 armor on every single location. Next up we have a much derided mech, the Mana War Prime. This unit is regarded as being vastly undergunned, especially for a clan assault mech, but its purpose is not to deal a lot of damage, its purpose is to take damage. This is kind of like the clan version of the Charger. It's over-engined for its size, moving at 5'8 for an 8 ton mech, the same as the Charger, and pouring a lot of its tonnage into armor and heat sinks. It comes in at 1500 battle value, which is unheard of for a clan assault mech, and with 32 heat sinking and a maximum of 14 heat produced by this mech, unless you are taking some major engine hits and getting hit by like infernos, this thing is essentially immune to heat weapons. Again, carrying over 20 armor on every single section, and 10 armor on all of the rear torsos, this thing is extremely hard to bring down, especially if it's moving across the field, generating 3 TMM with that 5.8 movement speed. Again, it carries ample ammo for its SRMs. Two of those, two LB5Xs, and an ER small laser as a little backup weapon. This mech can carry both types of LBX ammo, and it also can carry a utility ton of SRM6 ammo. Overall, if you're looking for a cheap brick of armor to lead your clan battle line, there is nothing better than the Gargoyle Prime, in my opinion. Now, speaking of cheap armor bricks, we're moving into our sniper category, and we're starting off with the Rifleman 2C, and there's two variants that do very different things in this selection that I've chosen. We have the Rifleman 2C2, coming in at 1345 battle value with over 200 armor. This is even cheaper as an armor brick than the Gargoyle. It does have significantly less movement, 463, does have those jump jets, meaning that it can be used in like city tech or other environments where you're going to want those jump jets. It can also get into position with its four Ultra AC2s and plink away from a high hill somewhere if you want to use it in that role. It has an absolutely ludicrous amount of ammo, so you can just fire those AC2s all day. But 30 armor on the legs, 20 on each arm, 22 on the torsos, 29 on the center torso. This thing is an absolute brick with a fusion engine. Now all clan mechs do have case. So, if you're concerned about all of that ammo in the torsos, 
it's a little bit less risky than if you have an inner sphere unit in this era. Ultra AC2s are pretty pathetic damage, even in ultra mode, and all of that armor is extremely precious for the clans. So having this unit as a cheap armor brick is perhaps a little bit unorthodox, but it really is great utility for a clan player to have such a cheap unit with lots of armor on it. Now, unlike the 2C2, the Rifleman 2C standard is a dedicated sniping unit. 353 movement profile means that it's great at getting up into a sniper perch and staying there, but not so good at moving around the battlefield. With 38 heat sinking, it can afford to fire its quad large pulse lasers for a few turns in a row before taking a cooldown turn. The little backup ear small laser in the head is kind of cute. It isn't really going to do all that much, but it's nice for moral support. If you lose one of your arms, you have something extra that you can defend yourself at close range with. Again, carrying a fusion engine, so it is a super tough energy boat with over 200 armor. This is a true zombie mech for the clans. It is a very expensive 2307 battle value, but you're not going to find a better fire support unit in the clan roster pretty much at all. Four large pulse lasers is absolutely devastating. Now, last but certainly not least, we have the Nova Cat. Again, I have two selections here. These are two different units that are performing different roles, just like the two different Riflemans. The Nova Cat C is your standard sniper. It wants to get into a good position somewhere and lay down direct fire support. It is the cheaper of the two by far at just under 2,000 battle value. This is really good value for a clan sniper unit. has two Ultra AC-5s, two large pulse lasers, and an LB-5X. The LBX cannon and the pulse lasers make this a great anti-aircraft unit. It will shoot down pretty much any VTOLs out of the sky pretty quickly, and it has its ammo all on the right torso, which is where all of the weapons are that use ammo on the right hand side, which is a nice design feature, uh, unlike some other mechs that I've reviewed on this channel. The ammo and the weapons are on the same torso, so if you lose the right side, you lose the ballistic weapons. If you lose the left side, you lose the lasers. 4 6 movement means that it is at best going to be a battle line movement speed. It's not going to be able to keep up with most other clan units, but you do get a pretty big battle value discount for that 4 6 movement, and it allows it to bring lots of armor, lots of weapons. Now, the Nova Cat B, on the other hand, is very expensive, just under 2,500 battle value, a little more expensive even than the Timberwolf S, but it brings a blistering six LRM-15s with plentiful ammo for them. So if you wanted some utility ammo like Thunder LRMs, or maybe you wanted to bring some semi-guided or even smoke rounds, this unit is fantastic for that. You could bring two tons of smoke ammo and lay down massive smoke screens just in front of your whole force, blocking line of sight to them, or with the extremely long range on the LRM-15s, you can lay them down in front of the enemy sniper line, forcing them to either move up or just entirely blocking their line of sight. Two ER medium lasers at close range help you to conserve a little bit of ammo, and overall the average damage that this thing is putting out is much higher than the Nova Cat C, although large pulse lasers are notoriously super efficient, they have extremely high accuracy, whereas you might not be able to hit some of those fast movers quite as easily with the LRMs. If you're having any trouble making a decision between these two units, the Nova Cat B has on average about 54 damage with its LRM Alpha Strike, whereas the Nova Cat C has an average of 35, so much lower overall damage, and max damage that the Nova can do just with the LRMs is 90 versus 45 with the auto cannons in ultra mode. So we're looking at basically double damage between the C and the B, although on average you're going to be hitting with those two large pulse lasers, punching some nice big 10 point holes, whereas the LRM-15s are going to be scattering all over enemy mechs, not doing quite as much pinpoint damage. Now obviously I can't cover every single really great clan mech, there are quite a few that I didn't cover in this, so if you have any suggestions that you would like to give to your fellow mech warriors for their next bachal, please leave them in a comment. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. We're nearing 1500 subscribers, that would be pretty fantastic to get to. Again, if you disagree with any of these picks, and don't think that these mechs are worth taking at all, leave a comment. Otherwise, have a great day mech warriors!